Hi everyone, my name is Evaila and this is a complete guide to the fated affixes and the new puzzling cartel dinar currency in Season 4 of Shadowlands. This video will walk you through all of the fated raid affixes and their mechanics within boss encounters, rewards you can get for completing fated raids, as well as how to buy certain raid items with the new puzzling cartel dinar currency. Feel free to check the timestamps in this video to skip to whichever part you need help with. Season 4 has been with us for a few weeks now, and with it, all three Shadowlands raids have become relevant again. That's Castle Nathria, Sanctum of Domination, and Sepulchre of the First Ones. Each week, one of the three raids will be marked as Fated, meaning that each boss in the raid will have an additional mechanic to work with, as well as dropping higher item level loot once defeated. You can see which raid is currently fated by this icon in the top right of the designated raid portrait in the dungeon journal. When a raid is marked as fated, you can still run it on every difficulty from LFR to Mythic, and each difficulty will still reward players with increasingly higher item level loot for higher difficulties. In terms of item level, you can expect to receive between item level 265 up to 272 for fated LFR, all the way up to 304 or 311 item level for fated mythic loot. Before you can get the loot however, you need to defeat each fated boss, and each boss encounter will be affected by a different affix each week. Each boss will only have one affix active on them at a time, so you'll only ever have one additional mechanic to work with. Let's look at each fated affix in more detail and see how the mechanics play out in a boss encounter. The first fated affix is Creation Spark. This will target two random players and charge them with a creation spark, increasing their character size and inflicting stacking damage to them every second for 30 seconds. Healers need to dispel the creation spark, which then causes three small white rings to form on the ground nearby to the dispelled player. Everyone then needs to run into one of the circles to soak the creation spark, which then buffs them in a variety of ways. It increases casting, attack speed, cooldown recharge rate, and periodic tick rates by 30%, as well as increasing your movement speed by 55% for 20 seconds. If any of the circles aren't soaked, they will explode and cause raid-wide ticking damage for each creation spark that wasn't successfully soaked. As there are two dispels that need to go off, healers should be mindful of incoming boss mechanics to avoid any problematic overlaps to ensure that every creation spark can be safely soaked. The next fated affix is Chaotic Essence. This will spawn a friendly Chaotic Essence at intervals during the boss encounter, which can be interacted with. After clicking the essence, it will become hostile and continuously spawn small chaotic motes with small health pools that channel raid-wide damage until they are defeated. Once a chaotic moat is killed, it will multiply into additional moats. After 15 seconds, the chaotic essence and all of its moats will dissipate and grant players a stacking 2% damage, healing and absorb buff for 25 seconds, and this effect stacks for every chaotic moat slain. This affix tends to fit nicely into most boss encounters, so you shouldn't need to time it correctly to beat the boss. In most cases, one player can interact with the essence almost immediately after it spawns to activate it. Just be mindful that activating the essence has a cast time, so make sure you're in a safe spot away from any boss mechanics before beginning the cast. Next, Protoform Barrier will empower the boss and deal raid-wide damage every 3 seconds as long as it remains active. Once dispelled, a hostile barrier enemy will spawn and place an absorb shield on the boss and any adds currently in the fight. Additionally, a friendly version of the barrier will spawn with low HP for healers to heal up. Both the hostile and the friendly barriers persist for 15 seconds. DPS need to hard swap to the hostile barrier and focus it down quickly, and healers can swap to the friendly barrier to help too. Once the barrier is defeated, it will deal all of that damage your group just dealt to it back to the boss, as well as granting players up to 25% increased damage, healing and absorbs for 40 seconds. If the barrier expires before it is defeated, it will explode and deal raid-wide damage. The final affix you will see during a fated raid is the Reconfiguration Emitter. This will spawn an attackable emitter which continuously casts, and it will be immune to damage until it is interrupted for the first time. While the emitter is active, it will be gaining energy which you can track in its resource bar on the raid frame. 
try to leave the emitter until it reaches 100 energy, as this will grant your group the biggest buff after it has been defeated. Continue to interrupt it while it gains energy, and then focus it down once it has fully charged. If any of the emitter's casts go off, they will deal ticking raid-wide damage which can be very difficult to heal through, especially with other raid boss mechanics happening simultaneously. Outside of instance raid content, fated raids will also affect the world bosses throughout each of the Shadowland zones. Depending on which raid is currently fated, the corresponding world bosses will also be fated, meaning that they will drop 285 item level loot. If Castle Nathria is fated, the four Shadowlands world bosses will be fated as well, those being Valinor in Bastion, Mortanis in Maldraxxus, Oranamonos in Ardenweald, and Nergash Muckformed in Revendreth. If Sanctum of Domination is fated, Morgeth will also be fated. He can be found in Desma Tyron just outside the raid entrance. If Sepulchre of the First Ones is fated, Antros will be fated as well. He is located on the Antestan Isle in Zerith Mortis. There are three separate rewards you can earn by completing all three fated raids on normal, heroic, and mythic difficulty. Completing all fated raids on normal will reward you with Jigglesworth Senior, the Slimecat mount. Defeating all bosses on heroic will grant you the title Hero of Fate. Finally, completing every fated raid on mythic difficulty will unlock raid teleports for each of the Shadowlands raid entrances. Moving on, fated raids also bring with them deterministic raid loot thanks to a new currency called the Puzzling Cartel Dinar. When you enter your first fated raid, you will see a quest pop-up called Crossing Fate, which will allow you to begin making progress on earning your first dinar. You can earn each dinar by defeating fated raid bosses, but once you have defeated them on one difficulty, the other difficulties will not count for that week. So for example, if you kill Vigilant Guardian on normal difficulty in Sepulchre of the First Ones, you wouldn't then be able to exit the raid, change the difficulty to Heroic or Mythic, to earn a second or third dinar from the same boss in that week. The first quest asks you to kill 30 fated raid bosses, the second requires 15 bosses, and the third only needs 5 bosses defeated. With each quest completed, you will earn one Puzzling Cartel Dinar, and each character can only ever earn and spend up to three. You can spend these Dinars at any of the three new Broker vendors next to the Great Vault in Oribos. Each Broker will sell you weapons, offhands and trinkets from one of the three Shadowlands raids. I would recommend looking up the best in slot items for your class and spec on Wowhead or Icy Veins to make sure you're making the most of your Dinars. The items you purchase in exchange for your Puzzling Cartel Dinar will be set at the normal Fated Raid item level, which is either 278 or 285 depending on which boss the item originally drops from. However, you can upgrade these items to either Heroic or Mythic item level respectively by killing Fated Heroic or Mythic bosses to acquire a special item which you can then combine to create an upgrade item to boost your Dinar items to Heroic or Mythic item level. For heroic item level upgrades, you need to kill fated heroic bosses which will drop one confounding antique cipher each, which you can then combine once you have earned 20 to create a cosmic creation impetus, and this is the item you will use to upgrade one of your dinar or fated raid gear pieces. As for mythic, you need to kill 20 mythic bosses to earn 20 confounding ancient ciphers, which you can then combine together to make a sacred creation impetus to immediately raise an item to mythic item level. Again, this upgrade only works on either dinar items or fated raid gear. Note that it is possible to skip the heroic upgrade item altogether if you wanted to. You can apply a sacred creation impetus directly to a normal fated gear piece to upgrade it straight to mythic item level. Puzzling cartel dinars cannot be traded, sold, or re-earned once you have gathered all three on one character, so make sure you spend them wisely. And there you have it, that was my complete guide for the Shadowlands Season 4 Fated Raid Affixes, Rewards, and the Puzzling Cartel Dinar. I hope you found this video helpful, and if so, please don't forget to give it a like, I would really appreciate your support. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with my content. Best of luck in Shadowlands Season 4, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye!